What's up? How you doing? Greetings and salutations, my friends. It is... What is it? What fucking day is it? I don't know what day it is anymore. I don't know what time of the day it is anymore. Do a video on Mega64. Coming in with, with the hot questions already. I'd love to do something with... Frank over there is one of our patrons. Um, and I met him actually at, a San, at the San Diego meetup. The first ever meetup we ever did when we did a... Is it Tuesday? Um, when we did the Rocket League documentary. Uh, and he's a really great dude. You should watch his stuff. Frank Kelly, good guy. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of all those guys. Obviously, everyone is. I'm going back, because they're the best. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it, there's something too legit about doing a documentary about Mega64. It would, like, ruin it or something. Like, let's wait until at least, like, three of them are dead. Like, <laughs> like in their 90s or something. Hitting up PAX West. I am not, B-Boy. I'm sorry. I have a baby girl now. There's a car seat. Look at this. We got fucking toys and shit. Look at this shit. Look at this. This is what I live in now. Look at this nonsense. There's a giraffe. And a fucking... Uh, this thing. So you can see my, my stereo. I'm listening to the bomb cast. The beast cast. And a button. This, is a, this button's way too big. Look at this. Ridiculous. Giant Bomb is currently discussing, oh, it is Tuesday. Who is the best Mr.? What say? What do you mean by Mr.? Like Mr. Mime? Like probably Mr. Mime, let's be honest. Um, best Mr. Yeah, I'm gonna go Mr. Mime. I'm not watching Dota 2. I'm not watching the International. But I did, I did watch the, uh, the, what is it called? Steam.tv, I think. The, like, new, new video app that they have running. Which look really cool, and we have one documentary up on Steam, the Horizon Zero Dawn one. I want to get more up over the next uh, next couple of months, um, the Fallout one. Although we have to stop put, stop putting docs up of games that aren't actually available on Steam because we just get, we just piss people off. We've had so many people searching for Horizon, and then uh, and then getting really disappointed when they find our documentary. Raining in Baltimore. Um, I'm up in Columbia at the moment, and it's not. Um, it was thunder back in uh, Annapolis, though. Um, so I don't know how that makes any sense because that Baltimore's here, Annapolis is here, and Columbia's in the middle, so I don't really know. Hello, Waterford, what's going on? Hey, uh, hey, Danny, did you hear Paul, Pan, Paul Manafort was good? <laughs> Everyone's losing their mind over the... I did, I, I, saw, I saw Paul Riker, uh, Dan Riker's dad, tweeting uh, that the rally should be interesting tonight, and I was like, oh, some Trump shit happened. And I looked it up, but yeah. Fuck, man, I don't know. I'm sick, I'm sick of, sick of all that stuff. Where's your easy pass? Where is easy pass in this car? I don't know. I drive the banger. I drive a, I drive like a 16 year old RAV4 usually. This is the family car. Um, we had to get a second car when we moved to Annapolis because in Oakland, we would never both need to leave the house and cars. But here, if somebody left with the car, then we'd be in, we'd be in trouble. Um, seen a lot of love for Red Letter Media, Red Letter Media lately, Danny. Got any favorite vids of them? Um, I love the, I always love the Blinkit stuff. And then I started watching Best of the Worst a couple of years back, I guess. Um, and previously recorded. But during this, because I've been baby minding, like I've been minding my daughter, I guess it's called parenting. People keep telling me I have to stop saying babysitting because it makes it sound like I'm not the parent <laughs> or something. Um, because of that, I've just been watching so much uh, video on YouTube and playing games. I've got 100 hours of Bloodborne over the past month, which is pretty crazy. Um, uh, somebody asked about No Man's Sky. I, have I comment? I feel like I've commented a couple of times a bit. I'd love to do something on No Man's Sky. Uh, I was waiting until Next came out before getting into it. Um, I'm friends with Sean, so like we we talk anyway, Like um, especially with all this parenting stuff. He's been very kind. He's from my the same county as me. Um, and unfortunately, we live in different countries now, so um, I haven't seen him in a good while. Uh, uh, he's from the same county in Ireland, I should say, which is not, a, it's a small county, Waterford in the southeast. Um, uh, and we've worked on stuff before, uh, so maybe, I, I think, I'd love to do it. Um, I think, uh, my hope is that we'll get around to it. Um, but nothing's 
in production or pre-production at the moment uh, on that but I'm, I'm uh, I think it would be cool to, to tell that story and I guess we'll just have to I guess wait and see uh, what am I doing today I am uh, doing the same thing I've been doing for the past four weeks which is basically being a support role for my wife so uh, today she has some chores to do in this business park so I uh, drove her here uh, to do that and I'm just hanging out and if she uh, uh, whenever she's done she's gonna come out and uh, I went to Starbucks as well which is fun which is great what's up Dylan nice to have you here uh, knife or bat I hate the knife or bat thing because the real answer is knife um, but the idea of stabbing someone is so disgusting to me but knife or bat the answer is knife definitely like as somebody who has been attacked with a bat and had a knife pulled on me I preferred the bat <laughs> I wasn't hitting the head I've been knocked out before but I wasn't hitting the head but a knife will you can you will kill someone I know I know people who've been stabbed I've heard about knives I've uh, I'm more scared of knives than I'm I've people have been stabbed around where in places that when I lived in London like knives are scary baseball bats are not scary Knives are worse. Pineapple on pizza. Pineapple is literally my favorite thing on pizza. Pineapple, my Hawaiian pizza is my favorite pizza, so I'm not a monster. I'm so sad. Um, sorry, I missed a couple of questions there. Uh, if you send them in, I'll, I'll, I'll answer them. I'm just chilling out here. I'm wearing this shirt. Tim Schafer used to say I only owned one shirt because I used to wear this shirt on the lobby every week. Um, then I got really fat and I couldn't really fit it anymore. And now I kind of fit in it again, which is really good because I lost some weight because I'm on the keto diet, which means eating a lot of fucking string cheese not that great but it's string cheese and jerky it's all I eat now pretty much that's a lie hit the pub you can drink spirits on this diet um, who's winning spa this week spa is this weekend I have the new Formula 1 game I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about it um, Codemasters um, sent me a copy which is really really kind of them um, I think they felt sorry for me because they knew I was uh, uh, one of the guys I knew I was just uh, he's a dad too, and he knew I was just sitting on my arse all week. Um, uh, so I'm not sure if I can talk about it. But I, it's, but I bet it's a fun game. Uh, I don't know, actually, about Spa. I have been... I, I actually... I, I can't believe four weeks have passed since I did the, the podcast, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll talk to Drew about it on the, the podcast, I'm sure. Although my replacement for the podcast is better than me, so I don't know what to do now. <laughs> Um, maybe we'll have to make it a three-way. I don't know. Maybe I'll just fucking bounce out. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a pleasant surprise. It's been great listening to it. Actually, I've, I've been really enjoying it. So I can't complain. Uh, what's your favorite rare game? As in Battletoads? Um, are you trying to are you trying to spoil the vote here? <laughs> what's your favorite rare game? It's Viva Pinata. It's the best rare game, obviously. Maybe the second one. Nah, first one. What's your hot take? Hot take on Windjammers too. It's cool that uh, they're making it. It's Don't Not Again, right? They made the... They did the, the port of the latest one. It's really weird because Windjammers, obviously... I feel like I feel like a lot of the reason why that, those, that HD one came out and this one came out is because of Giant Bomb. Like, it's because of Jeff, really. Um, but uh, it's really weird because then that also... There was, like, at least one other, like, knockoff one. What up, Hylian? Uh, like, another like uh windjammer like that came out on ps4 i want to say because I, I remember coming across it on the store so it's really weird how like there was none forever and then there was millions of them. same thing happened to um road rash everyone's like oh does she make a new road rash road redemption came out there's like a bunch of other road rash clones who come out so um uh yeah i don't know it's weird disc jam that was it yeah the other one people keep saying is roll cage they should make a new roll cage they made a new roll cage the roll cage people made it it's called grid no that's the fucking codemasters game what's it grip grip it's fucking really good i have it on i was on the early access or something for it um i played like i've got like 30 hours in that game and they only had like two levels for a while i'm not sure what the deal is with it now Remember Roll Cage? Roll Cage was that old PC game where you would drive. It was like a. It was like those. Remember those RC cars that you could flip over and they'd keep going. They were the, everyone wanted one. Um, yeah, those things are pretty good. Uh, Danny, how do you edit video or audio in an eff efficient way when you're on a deadline? Kill your babies. Just be real jerkish about the stuff that you think might not work. Just get rid of it. Like, 
uh, it's half the reason I start editing a trailer because I'm looking for the best, best stuff. So do that. Because otherwise what you'll end up doing is you'll end up doing one pass for the really good stuff and then you'll go, ah, I'll do another pass. And pulling selects from the dailies is the hardest part. It's the most time intensive part. So I kind of feel like that. Like, like make it shorter and fine. And if, and if, and if you if, and if the final thing doesn't look like it's good, then you can always go back. But you'll always be fine. You'll always be happy once you've done it that way. That was the big thing uh, for for me. The uh, editing a lot of the stuff. Um, wait, I have no babies, and I've been editing audio for the last twenty four hours. The other thing is don't record as much. Like that, that. That's the that's the sort of the the longer the more difficult it is to pull selects, the exponentially the longer the the cut will become, and the biggest difference I had ever seen is when we did the Final Fantasy stuff, we interviewed loads of people and it was in Japanese, so everything had to get translated. Um, and when we did the Bethesda stuff, um, our interviews were, instead of being an hour and a half normally, they were 40 minutes. And I cut the bullshit and we got to it. Um, and uh, it, it made it so we could edit the thing in two weeks or three weeks. What do I think of the guy that was plagiarizing reviews on IGN? I already tweeted a bunch about it. Um, and I got into a bit of kerfuffle with people about uh, how much I thought they should be, we should be diving into the story. I kind of feel like the story is over and done with. I think it's really sad for a bunch of reasons. I think it's really, well, number one, I think it's really fucked up that people, like, it's really hard to break into the games industry and like, like, I busted my ass trying to break in and there's loads of people who busted their ass probably twice, three times harder than me who didn't get in. And it's really shitty when you see somebody who got the opportunity to get in to know that they did it using all the, like, just by being a shit and, and also by copying people like it's not even like they didn't deserve it it's like they other people deserved it um uh i think the best thing you could have done is be quiet i think the apology video was bad um there is a i'll be lying if i saying there wasn't a small part of me that feels sorry for him or at least hopes that in terms of his mental health that he's like just taking care of himself and just walking away like i think the longer he tries to bounce with the idea that his career isn't totally finished. Uh, the, the worse it'll be for him. I think he needs to step away from games and do something else. Um, that's that's it. That that ship has sailed. So for himself and his family, I think the best thing he could do is just be quiet and, and stop. Um, hopefully. Um, and yeah, it's it's crazy. I think it's. Uh, I think IGN treated it well. Um, I go two ways on this thing. I think it, it also maybe salts the earth for YouTubers trying to get into mainstream maybe, or, but I also think it, I, I'm a little bit interested in how IGN managed to hire a YouTuber to write reviews if he didn't necessarily have that skill set. So I'm not blaming them for it, but I'm just, I'm interested in how, how it happened. Like, per, was there some process internal at IGN which pushed him into a situation where he was more likely to play drives again. I don't know. Um, I think, I do think it sucks for other people though who maybe will try and get in. But mostly I just think like they were blindsided. There's nothing the editorial team could, could do. I'm talking more about managerial wise. I'm, uh, editorial wise, there's nothing they could do to check if he was play, plagiarizing. But the whole idea that people, like I haven't written that many reviews for GameSpot. I think I did maybe eight. I did Hotline Miami 1 and 2. I did the FIFA games a couple of times. I did the Formula 1 games maybe three times. Um, and it was like a... Not only would you not want to read someone else's review, it was talked that, like, it was known within the industry that you just don't. And also, most of the time, you didn't have the opportunity to because you were writing to an embargo that everyone else was writing to, so everything was going live at the same time. Um, so the idea that people did that like i'm sure like i'm sure every once in a while some reviewer pre probably more so for some freelancer who is like a little bit worried about the review might go check someone else's it's not good to do it's not best practice like i hate the idea that people would do it and look at scores because that's the one thing you want because i remember scoring games being like fuck i wonder what i'm <laughs> gonna give this or something else but you just can't you like you have to be mature enough to not do it um but, but of course there would be a desire to, right? Um, but yeah, it's just a shame. But uh, the, the thing about writing reviews is that there's so many checks and balances. Like, or there's so much of a... It's the scariest thing I've ever done. It's way scarier than making videos or, or even like doing the video reviews. There's so much more wiggle room. Like, when you're doing your um, individual... Like, just something about writing words down 
for that many people to see that you just make sure that shit is watertight. So the idea that you'd you'd copy, especially like not not that it was ever okay, but especially today when everything is so easy to cross-reference and especially when you're on a massive site where you're going to have millions of eyes on it. So, uh, yeah, it's sad. Am I in the UFC? No, but I was a McGregor fan before he turned into a Pratt. <laughs> I hope he's calmed down a bit. I watched every, I've watched all of his fights since the Brimage fight. Um, that's a lie. The Steve, I was on a date with my now wife when the Seaver fight was on and my brother was giving me updates like play by plays I had to see so it's crazy I write too many words on my reviews I think I worry about myself yeah it's hard to do that it is really hard to, to edit yourself we had really good editors we had a, a QA system in um, uh, in GameSpot where we, your review would go into an email thread with everyone in editorial and they just tear it apart like it was like alright this is Ryan it was just like they, there was no time to be um, kind like th people weren't mean but it, they weren't like you know flowering up their language they were just trying to give it to you straight and it's quite it's quite scary to do it the first time but I like Kevin Van Oort was the editor when I was there and he was really good at like helping me along because I'm not a good writer um, and I did need a lot of help with uh, you know just explaining things in a way that's not overly wordy or using you know saying it's a mixed bag or like doing any of those things or trying to make it interesting so it was uh it's a it's a delicate it's a delicate skill i think once you've been doing it for a while like if you're a, a reviewer like a bona fide reviewer on a review team you're probably um it's probably not as daunting but um definitely for me on the video side doing the odd the odd uh, review was a little bit tough so fans of the genre will enjoy it. yeah exactly that that type of stuff like that that stuff gets on GameSpot, that stuff gets trimmed out pretty quick. You don't, and you don't make the mistake again. But I great, we were great people. Like Car Caro, uh, um, and uh, Tom McShay, and, and Kevin, and Peter Brown. Who I'm not sure if he's reviews editor anymore. Um, uh, how much? How's the attention been to no clips since you made the Bethesda doc? Because I would have said um, we got a lot of subs out of it, which was cool. Um, uh, on YouTube, we jumped like a hundred thousand subs, more or less, over that one. I'd say, eh, maybe eighty thousand, um, which was nice because it means that every other story we do afterwards, especially the ones that aren't as big or aren't as mainstreamy, it means we'll get more. Like the GOG one, like maybe a bunch of people watched that they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, uh, we did. I would say one of the things that we got from that one was we got a little bit more negativity. I think you tend to get a bit more, I think two things happened. I think one Bethesda um, is one of those studios that there's a sort of a cynicism maybe attached with the things they do. Um, uh, just generally when they change things or it's that whole ethos of like, you know, Fallout 3 was a really high selling game, but a lot of like the gamer crowd, like the message board crowd would say that New Vegas is a much better game over Fallout or the F or Fallout 4 was bad, even though it sold more than those. And it, There's like this sort of disconnect. Um, so that was kind of difficult to thread. And I think also the fact that we were doing something on a game that was pre-release um, played more, maybe didn't, maybe some of the audience didn't realize that what we do is like totally independent and we don't, we don't collaborate with them in terms of the edit and we, we pay for everything ourselves and we're, we're whiter than white. So uh, um, I think the trailer I did was maybe a bit too um, like celebratory, maybe. I was celebratory. I wanted it to be celebratory because I was so fucking jazzed that we'd, um, that we'd pulled off. A, not only that we got to talk to Bethesda, but we got to talk to Bethesda while they were working on something, um, which kind of, I don't know, was a... Was a a cool thing because it doesn't happen to many organizations um uh, press organizations or media organizations or whatever whatever you want to call this um so i think that was probably one thing where um uh, we're going to do a trailer for the second year and we're going to try and because like, all the uh, we don't ask for patronage really ever so and we never really talk about the mission anymore on there so we're going to do something just to be like hey by the way this is what we are this is what we do we're not we're not making paid for docs we don't we don't this is all independent we got paid a lot more probably if we did it that way but that's lame and then we wouldn't be able to do documentaries about GOG you know what I mean like we're we're not here to to, to 
to to make a buck and make make uh what would you call it make propaganda or whatever um even if the stuff is celebratory and some people say it's a bit too celebratory um i can i can hear that criticism um uh it just i feel yeah we'll we'll we've, we've got stories in the works that are that are maybe a bit more uh critical and cynical but uh when it comes to doing history of videos we tend to just talk to people about their jobs and not not get into the weeds too much um, or get into the weeds on the stuff that's about design rather than anything else um why did it take you three years to get into bloodborne because i worked at gamespot and we did i, I think i was you, you kind of move from game to game pretty quick because you're trying to keep up with what everyone's talking about that week at least i did when i was hosting the, the live show um, and then i had it we have our baby girl who's a month old now and i was sitting a lot on, on the couch and minding her and doing nothing and i i'd planned two months ago i planned i was like the, the games i'm gonna play i'm gonna play bloodborne i pay maybe i don't know 30 uh 30 no 10 hours maybe but when it first came out and it didn't really grab me um but it really grabbed me now a lot of people asking for a from software doc um we've done due diligence and uh i would say don't hold your breath we'll we'll I'm not. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not counting it out ever, but I'm counting it out for the near future. <laughs> um, uh, let's say. Apparently, they like our stuff though, which is really nice. Uh, but uh, we won't. We won't. We won't have a, a doc on that um, for the for the moment anyway. So um, I have feel like I have to say that because if I don't, then um people will keep asking and i don't like stringing people along it's uh there's a couple of games there's actually we'll probably do a video at some stage about the docs that we'd love to do that we won't be able to do um undertale's another one um or uh he's just not interested so there's nothing you know it's nothing you can do um doesn't people some people just don't want to talk on camera and that's that's the way of it um uh and i can't blame them so um yeah we'll 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 figure we'll do something about that it's hard because i want to like let people know but i also don't want to like i don't want people then putting those people on blast or asking them or hassling them or anything so um there's a lot of stuff like that there's a lot of stuff that we do that we can't really talk about because if we do it, if we talked about it it would fuck up the thing we do by not talking about it like all the different strategies we use with interviews and all this it's like if we tell if we said the thing we did then people would know so we we have to keep those cards a little bit closer to our chest um, uh, yeah, so we'll have to we'll have to see about that. We'll, uh, we'll get into some of that in the production videos, um, which have been really fun. Uh, we've got more docs coming out though. Dream Daddy one is practically finished. Jeremy sent me like a, an almost uh, almost finished version. That looks really good. Uh, my coffee is a iced coffee thing, um, and I'm an Arsenal fan for my sins. So we'll see. Caretaker year. I feel like this is. <laughs> Uh, would you ever revisit Sensible Software on Noclip? Um, the Escape from Stupid Sensible was brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Sensible Software is one of my favorite developers. They made Cannon Fodder, Sensible Software, Sensible Golf, WizKid. Um, I'm not sure. I did a video on their history at GameSpot um, that the per sorry, I missed your name. Um, the person there was just asking or mentioning. Um, I think I'd probably, if I went, we're looking at UK studios at the moment because we've not done one in, in uh, the UK yet. And there's a couple of other ones that I really love to do. Um, we're, we've already got one on Theme Hospital and Two Point Hospital, which dives into the sort of Bullfrog Lionhead stuff a little bit, um, which is almost edited. It was, it, was, it was supposed to be out, but then my kid came two weeks early, so I didn't get it out. So I'm trying to get it out in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. Um, the uh, I, the Bitmap Brothers is one I'd love to do. There's a really good um, um, there's a really good book that Read Only Memory did. They've done a sensible software book and a Bitmap Brothers book, which you can buy off their website. I think it's Rom Alerts is their Twitter account. Read Only Memories. They make um, video game books. Really good. I think they made the Sega Mega Drive one as well. I'm pretty sure. Um, so maybe the Bitmaps because they got like Speedball and 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 chaos, chaos engine right and all that sort of stuff that'd be fun um i'd also love to do something on codemasters uh dma the original i guess that's rockstar north now um team 17 kind of as well but it's hard there's like uh, Cygnosis, right like wipeout i'd love to do a doc on wipeout like that would be 
that would be amazing. Um, was there ever a Final Fantasy X fan? I've, I, the only Final Fantasy I've ever really played is fourteen, and it was because we did a documentary on it, and I had to force myself to play it because um, I didn't have a fucking clue about Final Fantasy. I'm sorry, it's just not my, it's not my jam, I guess. Um, love Codemasters back in the day uh, of advanced simulators. Yeah, like I'd love to do like Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter they did, right? And they published that. I'd love to do one on Red Storm, actually. Do all, all the Codemasters Go Go stuff. LMA Manager. Holy shit, I haven't heard LMA Manager in forever. It's happens you live in America. I'd love to do one on Football Manager. I'm surprised nobody has, actually. Because that'd be really interesting. I think they had a, 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 did they have an anniversary this year? Yeah, Flight Simulator, Doc. I wonder where that team is. Because that was an internal Microsoft thing. So... Like, God knows how that's going to go. Um, will we ever get any more Danny's uh, Disc Club? Um, yes, I'm currently writing the second episode of the replacement for Danny's Disc Club, which is called Bonus uh, Level, is what I called it. <laughs> Fuck. Um, which is on the Noclip channel. So you can watch the first one I did back in March, February. Um, uh, you can watch that already, and I'm writing another one now on Bloodborne. Just about it. About how rad it is. And why I like it so much. I'm thinking of getting a, I think I'm 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 working on this arm more more ink and I'm half thinking about getting a the the hunter's mark up here because I played all of my like one hundred and fifty whatever hours of Bloodborne and Dark Souls with my baby daughter sleeping here. So I feel like she was my teammate throughout the whole thing. Like she kept my heart rate down during all those boss fights because I had to like chill the hell out. So I was thinking of like commemorating this lovely moment in our life, well, most of them are. Um, and also I just want to fill up this arm a little bit more. Uh, I wish tattoos weren't so expensive. I want somebody, yeah. I'm trying to th I think this one was like 400 all in or something. Um, and so you got a tip as well, so about that much. What was your favorite place and boss in Bloodborne? Ooh, favorite boss. One of my favorite bosses, the ones you kill the quickest because I fucking hate the bosses. They stress me out so much. Favorite place? I think I, so I kind of messed up, I think, because I went from, I went from, I went to Old Yarnum before I went to the Cathedral Ward, or I only did a little bit of the Cathedral Ward before I went to Old Yarnum. Be uh, sorry, until, uh, before, and then I went to Old Yarnum, and I basically completed Old Yarnum, um, and then went back to the Cathedral Ward, and I was like, it's fucking easy. And I think what had happened, I think I'd like over-leveled myself, because between the Cathedral Ward, or once I'd fil finished Old Yarnum, from the Cathedral Ward to the po to the end, almost, um, I felt way more powerful than, than I needed to be. Or I felt like I was more powerful than certainly than I was when I was in um, Central Yarnum before. Uh, yeah, because the forest I didn't find too hard... Um, the Nightmare Realm was tricky, but like not too tricky. So I ended up doing Canehurst and I completed that and that wasn't so bad except for the Bloodsuckers at the front who fucking can't stand. Um, I'm playing the DLC at the moment and I'm stuck on, um, I'm stuck on what's his face with the, pulls out the sword halfway through. It's killing me. So we'll have to see about that. Um, what was that shit? Somebody, I can never, how do I get the chat up on this thing? If you have any questions, send them on. Sorry, I'm, it's just me chilling out in a, in a, in a in a car at the moment. Um, I'm getting back to work at Noclip in the next uh, next three weeks, probably. Although I'm still working on stuff all the time, just secretly. Um, are you interested in covering Nintendo games? Super, as you imagine. I didn't watch Duel Ireland, sorry. I'm a Waterford fan, it's heartbreaking. When both teams play shit in, in the final, we would have beaten either of them. Um, uh, yeah, I would do Nintendo stuff. They're very difficult to... I think they just have their own thing going on. They don't... I've, we've never properly reached out put it that way so I, I can't put the blame on anyone else except ourselves um, I love the Breath of the Wild vignettes they did the developer vignettes were really really cool um, I'd love to do I'd love to do one on Breath of the Wild um, I don't really know what other Nintendo games pop out to me I guess like Odyssey although not although not really it's compa it's like kind of compelling but it's not not nearly as much as um as Breath of the Wild. Am I excited for the Pope coming to Dublin? No. My siblings, my brother and sister keep sending me pictures of all the tourist shite you can now buy in the shops of Pope Francis' face on them. 
I don't know. Bad timing with all that pedo stuff, eh? More of it. It's fucking never ending, man. It's so bad. That really messed up people back home in Ireland. That whole... That whole... Uh, I don't know why you call it. Just the fallout from it, I guess. So for it to happen again now is a little bit like... Yikes. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of uh, chatter about it back home. Excited for Red Dead 2. I cannot wait for Red Dead 2. I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm really excited in all the stuff that they're, they're talking about in terms of the interactivity and... Um, the way in which the story sort of organically looks like it's flowing. Um, like the world building and all that sort of stuff. I'm kind of like... Uh, you kind of trust them to nail that. But I think the thing that Rockstar does every time is they push the boat out in ways that people kind of don't register or they kind of change the way open world games work. And we 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 sort of understand it on a very systems-based level, but we don't understand lots of the the stuff that's going on that's not so obvious. And you can see it in like open world design between GTA V, uh, before and after GTA V, and how that influenced a lot of the Ubisoft stuff um, uh, and other people's stuff. Um, some in really boring artificial ways but some in more subtle ways and I feel like that's happening again with this where like there's a lot of shit it seems like going on under the hood in this game like Rockstar do that every game like there's always a massive leap in lots of systems that are not like they don't call them anything it's like the Nemesis system in, in Shadow of War right it's like every Rockstar game has a bunch of shit like that but they just don't name it and don't talk about it so I'm really interested to see uh, how like what they're doing it looks like they're doing a lot on this one in terms of like interactive storytelling and and people remembering stuff and all that i mean i hope so but we'll see when it comes out i guess or whenever they do previews but i'm i'm, I'm interested to see how that all comes together because it looks like they're this is their first big game since five right so um that's that's a pretty long time actually uh yeah so we'll have to we'll have to see and it looks gorgeous so i mean it's funny everyone like whatever this all the Gamescom videos are going up at the moment, trailers, and uh, on Reddit and Twitter, everyone, and YouTube, everyone's saying like, oh, can't wait to play that next year. I've got Red Dead pinned for the next three or four months. It's kind of, um, it's incredible how much of a dent they make in, in the rest of the, the video gaming world. Uh, Star Citizen will be a fun one. Um, I've talked to those guys before uh, about something, or the, one of the guys who runs their, their sort of PR stuff. I know him from doing stuff in the past. Um, uh, we've talked about it. It's, it seems like a rather large project because they have like five, four or five studios. Um, uh, nothing in the works at the moment, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's something we come back to again in the future. Um, I was a little bit intimidated by the scale of it, and budgeting stuff is really, I don't want to say difficult, but I tend to be a little bit more conservative, save up a bunch, and then spend a lot of it. Um, so some docks are more expensive than others. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll. We'll see. There's, there's a bunch of those ones. There's one like Eve I'd love to do as well. Like those types of big MMOE type stuff. Like the one we did with Final Fantasy XIV. It requires so much more um, uh, research, I'll say that. Um, and I got the wonderful Eve book, um, which has all the, the stories of uh, the wars that happened 10 years ago. Uh, there's a second book coming out, actually, which I'm looking forward to as well. But um, yeah, in a way, I kind of feel like it's also been documented a little bit. I think a Star Citizen is also surprising six years is so little to show for it. Yeah, it kind of... I don't know. It seems like a lot of that community is satiated. I guess I can't... I guess I'm maybe assuming. I can't really tell. But it does seem like there are people who are more than happy to keep chucking money at that thing and, and are believe in the mission that they're not worried that the game hasn't come out yet. Although I'm sure there are also people who aren't. Whenever they do those... Um, um, whenever they do those like developer streams like they did the one which showed the ship dropship coming down and all that stuff a couple months back like people lose their minds over it so um, like I don't know if there was if I wanted one dream game to be made and then somebody was making it I wouldn't necessarily care if they took forever to do it maybe I don't know maybe it cuts both ways I think the budget seems overblown for Star Citizen I actually disagree with that one I think they're Games are like super, super expensive to make. Like especially ones of that at that scale. Um, and especially when you're doing like so much stuff like architecture wise and swapping out engines and hiring like five teams in three continents and hiring voice actor celebrities. Like the money's getting spent. I wouldn't worry about the money not getting spent. I don't think the story at the end of Star Citizen will be the game is bad 
and they had a hundred million dollars left over i think the end story will be the game is bad or the game is good um i don't i, I can see where the money is being spent they have like i don't know i guess they have like somewhere between four and eight hundred people working on that game like that costs a lot of money to employ people um you know week over week you think about the last time you heard about star Citizen, right maybe it was like a year ago so then a year at a year you know a hundred thousand dollars let's say average salary for a software engineer probably not that high multiply that by you know 400 people for one year like it costs a lot of money you're gonna periscope a paul Riker out anytime soon um he's up in kansas i was uh, talking to i was texting dan yesterday and asking about paul he's apparently doing good so i'm glad to hear it uh, Quake 5 or Warcraft 4, what's more likely? Single player, ooh, Warcraft 4, definitely. You can see Blizzard going back towards that well, right? Like, Battle for Azeroth is a very Warcraft 2 setting. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to um, see more in that. Um, uh, how many projects do you have in the pipeline? What have we got? We got Dream Daddy Doc is, is almost finished. We're gonna wait until, I think it's gonna go up to Monday, September 3rd, I think it is, the Monday. Um, it'll probably be finished tomorrow or the next day, but I hate, I don't like releasing docs at the end of a month because it means that um, we get patrons that sign on and our stuff charges at the first of the month regardless. So even if you sign up on the 30th, it'll charge you again on the first. And then I end up reaching out to people uh, or tweeting it and being like, we had their refunds for people who that happens to. Um, but I don't like leaving a bad taste in people's mouths. So what we tend to do is not put docs out until the end of the month or until the start of the month so then when people just sign up on patreon that they get a full month out of it um uh thank you uh guy guy grip um so we've dream daddy we have esteban's one on the fighting game uh community on 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 spooky um we have two more which are almost confirmed which i can't talk about between now and christmas and we have another one, an international one, almost confirmed for the first quarter of next year. And they're all super crazy projects. So um, lots, lots is going on. Um, the podcast it will be episode two, well, the podcast will be up and the next episode of bonus level. Uh, oh, sorry. And also we have a Bethesda thing. I totally forgot. I keep forgetting about this. Um, we have a Bethesda documentary about the design of fallout shelter and of blades um which is their the elder scrolls one they showed off at e3 um which is really fascinating it's really good it's got a bunch of their folks from their uh canada canadian um uh studio uh, todd's in it a bunch uh it's it's really really good um uh and then we also have this extended interview we did with Tim Willits back when we did the Doom Doc, which I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna put it out under like, out of the archive or something. Cause it's a really good chat, but we just, we tried to make a Quake thing and I just didn't have enough for it. And then we did the Romero thing and I was like, oh, can we use this and this? And it didn't really work. So um, so we have this like really good interview with, with Tim Willits. It's like 90 minutes long. Um, uh, and he was a super nice guy and very interesting anecdotes. And we were just sitting on it. So. I think I'm just going to put it up as an extended cut at some stage um, over the next couple of months or something. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot. We've got a lot. We've got the next six months is is, is fun. I'm kind of coming out of the gates um, revved up as well because I've had, I've, I haven't worked. I haven't worked. I haven't, I haven't sat down on my desk downstairs in a month, um, but I've still been working, emailing every day, working with uh, Jeremy and Alana on, on the Dream Daddy thing and loads of other stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, well, let's see about that. Quake 2 is a great game. Quake 2 is the best grenades in video games. I'm going to say it. Fucking twists them, throws it, and then it makes a ticking noise so you can hear when it's going to explode. So you can cook the grenade and it goes click, 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 and I think it goes on the third one. Um, and the animation for them is so good. Quake 2 is the best. Do you ever get insomnia? I used to get insomnia real bad for years um uh i used to drink myself to sleep because my insomnia was so was so bad um and also because i just liked drinking um which probably wasn't great um 
I, I wish I had a solution for you. My The solution to my insomnia was I met my wife and suddenly I was really calm going to sleep. So I don't know. I, I, wish, I, I wish I had an answer like a pill or exercise or therapy. I'm guessing all those things would probably help. Um, probably helps that my wife's a therapist. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Go play some quick too. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish I wish I could tell you. Um, what do you think about a dock on the Infinity Engine games? Infinity Engine, Infinity. Why can't I remember Infinity Engine? Let me. What's Infinity Engine? Disney Infinity. <laughs> Infinity Engine. Is this old or new? I'm trying to think. There's so many engines that I don't remember. I was looking up the Rockstar engine recently. Go looking at Red Dead footage. It's the Rage engine. Um, nobody talks about the Rage engine because I guess they don't outsource it to anyone. Is that the Final Fantasy 15 stuff? Is that what you're saying? Is that what Infinity is? Oh no, Baldur's Gate, Plane, Planet, Planescape. All right. Um, Baldur's Gate came up a bunch in our CD Project one. That was fun. Um, I'll be honest. I don't. It hasn't been asked for much, and it's not something I have a personal history with, so it hasn't come across my window, or hasn't come across yet. It's one of the reasons I'm trying to collaborate with more people, is to, like, we're going, I'm going to do the docs that I, on the games that I'm interested in, no matter what. But I, I love the idea of getting more people involved, because it means that we can do stories that I wouldn't necessarily uh, do myself. Uh, I've just realized that um, I'm gonna have to hang up in a second because my wife is gonna come back in a sec. So one or two more questions, let's get them in. And then I gotta go. Thanks so much for hanging out. I've been bored off my tits here, uh, drinking this coffee very slowly because I need to pee and I have to drive 40 minutes home. Um, so I appreciate you hanging out. It's nice to talk about video games as well. I haven't done that in a while. How many almost confirmed projects disappear? None. Usually when we get to the point of it happening, it happens, it just sometimes takes a while. Our Warframe one took a year. Um, Bethesda took five months to get filmed. What's up, Canada? Alberta? Uh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think if any got, we, ha we had one, we, we did have one. I wouldn't say it was c confirmed. It was like almost confirmed. And then there was a big, shake up company got sold situation um and then it it stops um but we have we've managed to get it back i think so i'll talk i'll be able to talk about that in a year but it looks like we've got that one back um so that will have taken about a year and a half to, to do but it was yeah it was we had we were ready enough to put it on the calendar. I wouldn't say it was like confirmed. We weren't like, we weren't like, we didn't have flights booked or anything like that, but it was, it was, it was on the, it was on the, the, uh, on the, the long arm, definitely. Long arm, that's not a phrase. Uh, where are you from? Waterford, south of Ireland. Uh, do you get used to the humidity? Yeah, I love the humidity here. Also, you have air conditioning in this country, so it doesn't fucking matter, really. Um, it was at uh, 32 degrees in Ireland all, all summer. Uh, that's centigrade, so that's like, what's 32 degrees? 16 is 60 so 32 is like 85 maybe but with no um air conditioning it makes it like 10 times harder so it's pretty good waterford i said southeast of ireland small town about fifty thousand people it's not that small i guess small by american standards uh thanks so much for hanging out really appreciate it hope you have a wonderful day um if you want updates on everything that's going on with no clip no clip that video or probably the no clip twitter account no clip video i think it is uh, on twitter or daniel dwyer on twitter or retweet most of that stuff um if you're a patron we've put up a bunch of stuff in the past couple of weeks uh, if you're not a patron go to patreon.com forward slash no clip we have two articles up about the dream daddy doc and the fighting game community doc which is free for everyone to watch so you can just go check that stuff out if you want um yeah, and uh, hope you're having a good day. I am going to go play some... I just pulled out the cartridge by accident. Fuck. <laughs> well, I was going to play it. I'm going to play some more. Link between worlds. All right, have a good one. Bye!